Hello YouTube, welcome to our real proper next unity tutorial and this one is going to be a massive cool one for everyone who's into game making. Um, it, it, it's not actually been recommended which is like quite surprising but when you hear what it is you're going to be like oh yes because it is every single game in the whole world has one of these and I'm not even joking. So um, if you can't tell, I'll not tell you till we find out, but we need this scroll to contain information. And if I open up it in Photoshop what I've done, collecting five apples, we now have a mission to do. This is going to take a long time-ish, it shouldn't be too hard, and we're going to add to it, but what I plan is to have a wooden board and we put the scroll on. When you walk up to it, you press your E button, it brings it up big screen and you press your key to accept or not it says if you can't read it collecting five apples which is the title the farm has run out of apples and the apple pie eating contest is right around the corner um, it's a bit different to our realm game but it's a basic game mission bring five apples to the farmer we need to create the farmer reward a hundred gold coins so it's a bit different collecting one coin you get a hundred now so um, I've done it authentically um, well, text style. Um, I'll put the scroll and the new scroll in the description as well. So please have fun. You can do whatever you like with it, change it, whatever. I've kept it as a PSD file so that you can. What you may call it? Er, I forgot the name of it. Edit it. That's it. And now somewhere I've put this mission scroll. Where's that put it? Oh, in scrolls. <laughs> there we go. So we've got this. Um, so what I plan to do is we need a plane first. So if we go to create object plane, there we go. And what we can do is drag that on top. Boom. There we go. That looks quite good actually. So what we can do is go to diffuse and make it transparent. You can't see it, but I'm going to click bumped diffuse. There we go. So it's pretty much actually quite good. So I'm quite happy with that. So if we go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, we didn't actually need to do the middle one. But so now where are we gonna stick this? I'm gonna stick it to the wall. That'll do. Come here. Stick it to this wall here. Get out of orthographic view, and we'll rotate it upwards. 90. That's not words this one upwards, in fact we'll just do it by hand, that's it, so we're almost there, 90, 0, so if we rotate it this way, ooh, 90, 180, 0, there we go. And now what we can, it, this would have been better on a box. Yeah, we might have to put it back to a box. Yeah, I'm going to put it to a box because then we can see it better than what we can already. So a cube, I'm going to sound the texture to it. Ooh, transparent doesn't look very good. Never mind. We'll scale it all the way down. Just so we can see a bit of the side. What's that one look like? We need to rotate it the other way. Like that. 180. There we go. And now when we go to the side, we can actually see it compared to when we can't. Which looks better, actually. Because if the plane does look better, we may as well put up with it. If I did look the same, it's okay. So now what we can do is go to the side and just inch it closer. We only want the tiniest bit going through the wall. We don't want everything going through the wall. Else we can't see it. Like that. So it is touching the wall, I believe. Yep, that'll do. So let's see if we can actually see it first. See if we can't, then it's not going to be very good. So let's go and have a look. We really should turn our character speed up just so we can see it, but let's go and have a look. So, what we're going to do is when we go up to it, and we're going to do a range detection which we'll take from it. So we can't read it at the moment, but if we We'll make it so it'll pop up on a GUI screen and say, um, do you want to accept this mission? Yeah, so, should we make it a bit bigger? I think we should. So, 0 0.01, make that even. And this one will make 2, 2. Oh, that's too big. 
1.5. There we go. So we've created the scroll. Let's create. Let's name it correctly. Mission one. Yeah, that'll do. So we've got that, but we should put underscores into it. And well, actually, an empty game object. So scroll missions. There we go. Click five apples. And that was my phone, I apologise for that. Click five apples, so add underscores, so when we search for it to delete it, it'll be easy enough. And there, so that's that one done. So now we need to create the apples. For the apples, I'm simply just going to use a green texture, like just for now. So a green sphere. Sphere, and we'll drag it out. Now we can either make it spawn all the apples when the game starts, or we can. We need to delete the center because that's copyright. Yep. Um, we can either make it start like the apples just spawn all the time, or we can make it when it starts. It spawns it. I think we'll do it when it starts because it'll be easier. So apple, our mesh renderer. Um, we need to get a green texture. So we go to our textures, create a new folder. In fact, we've got an items folder, haven't we? Could just use the items folder. Okay, apparently we don't. Let's create an items folder. Items. Oh, pardon me. Ah. Um. I swear now we had one. Okay, then in here we're going to create a new material and we'll call it apple. So we can eventually assign the apple texture to it. And I'm just going to colour this green. You can't see because it it's off screen. So assign that to that. Sign up to that. We have a green apple. We'll just assign it here. For now, we'll just assign it near the wall so he doesn't have to walk very far to collect. Duplicate that. Duplicate that. Duplicate that. And duplicate that. So we have five apples. You can get all that and we'll just stick it into the missions and we'll put it with the scroll so everything's all together. So if we delete that one scroll, everything disappears. So it'll be really, really helpful. So we can get all these here, and we'll just untick the mesh renderer. We can enable it eventually. So we've got that. And now we need to actually make it so when we hit it, it activates. So best way to do this, we will just do it from one script per mission. Seems easier than doing like a complex script what checks what mission it is. La da 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 da. So JavaScript. Um, not JavaScript folder, sorry, and we'll call it missions. And to make it easy, we'll just do missions one to ten. So this is missions all the way from one to ten, because then if we have a list of every single missions, it'll get very complex. Well, not complex, just messy. So in here, we will type the name of the mission, which it doesn't seem. There we go. Mission 01 collecting five apples. There we go. So we can assign that to this one here. There. So in here we can type. Um, this is off at the top of my head, so if this doesn't work, I do apologize. Private var um, mission active equals false. So that will determine whether the action um, mission is active now or not. If not, then well, it doesn't matter. So, um, in function update, if mission active is true, this is all basic if statements. We already all know this because we're all clever, aren't we? And um, we don't need any of that. That's all from previous work. But this mission active equals true, then, um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll make an array. We all know what arrays are, don't we? So, var apples is a game object and it'll be an array there we go um, for var i equals zero so the beginning of the array i is less than apples dot length so the length is the array i plus plus increase the i I remember when I first started programming and I had no clue what a false loop was it was the hardest thing in the world to learn but then when you pick it up it's like 
it's really so simple but yeah so for every app when it's active it's going to be running a constant loop which is not what we want so in here we'll type if apples zero that's not that's not gonna wait yeah equals equals um dot game object dot active equals true yep that should work so now we check in because if we had left it like that it'll be is the machine active when we go up to it yes it will be then is the app um, if we didn't put that in it would just be constantly running this loop over and over again enabling all the apples over and over again which should like take up an enormous power however with this one it'll check if the first apples game object is active if it is then it will if it isn't then it will run the for loop but if it is then it won't run the for loop there we go so in here we'll type apples i so for the for loop dot game object dot active equals true so if we try that now and get rid of the private var so we can just test it it should hide all the apples then show all the apples once we equip the variables the active is obsolete we need to use dot set active so set active wait how are we supposed to do it in a for loop hmm set active let's see if it likes that it does not like set active because it's meant to be in brackets that's why there we go try again so it's this new language in unity because when I've been using unity for nearly two years and to go change it it's a lot weird so we'll change this to five and then we'll go and assign every single apple and we are going to enable the mesh renderers back on but deactivate the game objects so in here that one one two three the reason we're assigning it with an array is because obviously we want the players to be able to pick up apples without the game without having to do the mission so we, this way we can so as soon as we tick that box it should show every single apple hopefully click boom every single apple active and is it lagging nope so now we could go up and collect them however what we are going to do is move our character much closer to it because then that way we can get to it quicker we need to be able to pick up the apples that's one thing we need to do so the best way to do this would be we need to create a new um, inventory item so the character can increase his apple count so, um, if we go to our player inventory here, item ID, let's create a new one. So, we create apple. Player's amount, we have none. Item buying amount, so how much will people buy it for? If it's an apple, we'll say two. Um, how much can you sell it for? One, because it's always half for it, because they're cheeky. Invite new texture item ID length. We need to add a texture for apple. So four equals apple. That'll do. So let's add a texture to it. If we go to our resources folder and item icons, in here we can just duplicate item bar. Call this four apple. And if we open this in Photoshop, which I've still got open, what we can do is just make a quick texture. Ah, oh, keep forgetting you can't do that. It's a bit annoying that. I wish you could. So we need, it needs to be black background. We'll do a green sphere and do a little brown stalk coming off it. it pro it's going to be a really, really bad. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, it 